Hi guys, I'm Kathy Crisp and you are watching our channel which this week we will be looking at the unique ST16 remote controller. If you haven't subscribed to my channel on the video here, click the subscribe channel and you will get notified of all our latest videos. As I've said, this week we are looking at the ST16 controller that's shipped out with the unique Typhoon H models. We'll be comparing the two aerial model that was uh, originally shipped out with the advanced Typhoon H uh, and we'll be comparing it with the three aerial model sometimes called the ST16 Plus and this was shipped out with the Typhoon H Pro version. So we're going to be looking at these and looking at different times and the comparison. This is part one of the comparison. What I'd like you to do is put comments down in the below section asking me what you'd like to know and I will hopefully be able to compare the two models for you so you know exactly what the difference is. So the first comparison we're going to make is the actual look of the controller. And on first glance it would appear that the only difference is the configuration of the aerials. On the older version ST16 we have a single long aerial and a small stubby aerial which is movable to sort of point to where the drone is. And on the newer three aerial model we have two of the longer aerials and one short stubby aerial which is a fixed aerial. There's a slight bend in it but it's not hinged like the old uh, aerial was. But if you look a bit closer there's a further difference in these at the right in here for the obstacle avoid switch. It's still got three positions, each of them has got three positions, but on the old version it's an off and on, and on the new version it's on the opposite side, it says off and on in that place there. And then the flight mode button, the old version has got an S for smart, an A for active mode, and a H for home in this corner here. On the newer model it's spelt out for you. It says smart, angle and home. So you can actually see what uh, mode you're in without guesswork. Obviously depending on which mode you're in the lighting system on the back of the uh, Typhoon H will indicate which mode you're in. So I believe it's green for smart mode, purple for angle mode, and red for home mode. So that's a visual indicator on the platform for you. Both of these controllers still have the HDMI port on the top of the controller, which is great for your screen, screen capture device or to plug it into a television so you can later play the footage that you've got from your controller and the built-in Android device that you have built in. You can also link that um, directly to the television so you can watch things like on YouTube through the Android player that's built in. It's a really handy port to have on, on this system. So our next comparison is going to be the start of times of both the controllers. And I think the best way to test this is to compare them one against the other rather than time each one individually. Uh, so I'll knock them both on whilst they're lying down and then we'll have a look at the screens as they start to see if one's in front of the other. So powering on now. We will do a comparison of connecting these to the platform in just a moment. moment they seem virtually the same.
Okay, so I think the three aerial version was slightly quicker, but only by a fraction of a second. Um, but really, I think they're, they're a comparable processor speed and start of times of each of the controller. Okay, so for our next test, we're going to look at the time that it takes to link the ST16 controller to the Typhoon H platform. And to do this test, what I'm going to do is turn the controller on, turn the platform on, and the moment the platform turns on, I will start the stopwatch and stop the start watch once the camera and the remote control are actually linked to the Typhoon H. The binding process has been completed already, they're already linked to this, so it's just a matter of linking the camera, which in the UK takes a little bit longer, and Europe takes a little bit longer than the USA for some reason. I believe it's something to do with the uh, connection or the firmware that's used in Europe and the firmware that's used in America. They are different for some reason. I think it's something to do with the licensing of the frequencies. So uh, we're going to turn on the controller. I'm just getting ready to start the stopwatch. Start the stopwatch and we'll just watch the screen until that's connected to the drone. From past experience, this takes about a minute and a half generally for the camera to connect on this particular controller to the drone. That's one minute thirty now, so any moment. I got one forty there, although it was a bit more difficult to see because the camera was pointing down at the table so it was difficult for me to see that it had connected. So we're looking at about 1 minute 35 for connection of the 2 aerial model. So now let's take a look at the 3 aerial model see if there's any difference in the timing of that. Okay and now on to the 3 aerial version. So again we'll knock the controller on first just let that power up and then I'll knock the platform on starting the stopwatch at the same time so again we'll keep an eye on the screen and as for the last one these have already been bound to the platform and we'll see if there's any improvement on the three aerial version on connecting to the camera so these controllers are running the same uh, firmware, it's uh, I believe B3 or B30. Now. 
30 and we have connection. One minute 32, one minute 33, all that. So it's near enough identical in timing, maybe a couple of uh, a couple of seconds quicker, but nothing uh, that great. So that's it for our, the first part of our comparison. The only difference really is the uh, newer version 3 aerial version the wording is different on the controller where it actually says angle mode and smart mode and home mode rather than the letter abbreviations and obviously the visual aerial uh, the camera link time was maybe a couple of seconds uh, difference but nothing to write home about um, for our next video we'll be looking at doing a range test with both controllers to see if there's any difference in the range and see what the advantage or disadvantage is of having the three aerial version. If there's any other tests that you want me to look at, leave a comment in the section below. And as I've said, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you if you're already subscribed to our channel. It's a big boost and it's why we do what we're doing. Um, and if you have any ideas, you want to know some more information about the ST16 or the Typhoon H, just ask me in the comments section and I'll hopefully be able to answer your key query.